Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of D-Pad Reacts, where today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new trailer uh, at long last for Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Uh, there was apparently a leak of the trailer, uh, I think last week, maybe a little bit earlier. I didn't check it out then because I figured there was a pretty good chance that we were going to be seeing the full trailer sometime very soon anyway. Uh, and lo and behold, here we are. It might have been, you know, their hand might have been forced slightly by the leak so that they didn't, you know, lose too much time there. But uh, I'm really interested in this one uh, in particular for two reasons. One, uh, I'm a big fan of Paul Rudd. Uh, I think he's been great as Scott Lang. I think uh, it's been really interesting how uh, Scott Lang has increasingly become despite being one of the definite most comedic characters in the MCU, he's become more and more of a linchpin to like the biggest events going on. Um, like Ant-Man one, it was very much a side adventure. Didn't have a whole lot to do with anything. And he was kind of on the fringes with a little, uh, you know, interaction with, uh, um, uh, with Sam Wilson back when he was the Falcon. Uh, and the next time we see him, he's involved in the civil war conflict. And then after that, he, winds up going into, uh, uh, you know, he, he winds up coming back from uh, the quantum realm just in time to deliver, you know, the solution of time travel, essentially, to uh, to the Avengers in Avengers Endgame. Um, and here we are with Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, where uh, he is going to essentially be part two of the sort of multiversal explosion of, of uh, this... Uh, multiverse saga that we're in the first one being uh the events of the disney plus series loki which resulted in the creation of the multiverse and we're seeing the first uh kind of major you know new result of that which which is i mean not not to spoil it before we even get into the trailer but it was advertised pretty well ahead of time that this is going to be where we first see uh kang the conqueror played by jonathan majors so i am very interested to see uh, you know, how they, how they do this up. It's about a two minute trailer. Um, and we'll see how it goes. I'm really interested. Let's, let's jump on in. I used to ask myself a lot of questions. Scott, you're at ex-con. How are you an Avenger? That doesn't oh, make wow. sense. Hey, they brought the, the, bas the, the boss room. Baskin Robbins. The same thing. Thank you, Spider-Man. <laughs> Is that literally the that. cafe from That's I Love You, Man? This. Like a satellite for deep space, but Quana. Wait, wait a minute. You're sending a signal oh. to the quantum realm. Oh no. Oh, that's Turn bad. Now. Oh shit, that's definitely bad. Hope's Hope has the weirdest has the weirdest haircuts. Oh. Oh damn, are they all going in? Shit. How are they in there without helmets and things? Also, our third actor for uh, for uh, Cassie. What is happening here? It's a secret universe beneath ours. Oh boy. What are you so afraid of? Ooh, we get the return of the. Uh, There's something I never told you. The sort of quantum garb that they had going on. This place. It isn't what you think. Oh boy. Getting our Kang. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Interesting. Hey, we got Bill Murray. I'll get you home. And give you more time. Whoa. If you help me. So. What's it going to be? Batman. Interesting. Okay. Okay, I wasn't sure if there was going to be one last, like, sometimes I throw a little thing there right at the end. Uh, it's very interesting how, in some ways, we're kind of treating the quantum realm which is sort of a, like they were saying, a universe under their own as its own 
you know, full scale universe in, in some sense. Like we got it essentially felt some of the vibes there felt very like Star Wars, Star Trek in terms of like alien life in a similar way as you'd get to an outer space adventure. But instead of it being outer space, it's all in this tiny infinitesimal pocket space underneath everything else. Um, interesting. So I'm curious what like what the deal is, why they like it seems like they're probably stuck there um, without a real way to get back. And I guess Kang is offering like, oh, I'll get you back. But it also seems like he's sort of saying that like now he's he's setting his sights on the so so is Kang the Conqueror has he always been in the MCU part of the quantum realm just this microscopic dude who just they kept fight I mean it would make sense why there would be so it's I'm like there's a bunch of theories kind of rocking in my head all at the same time. Um, obviously they're trying to lean into like a multiversal kind of angle for it, but I could just as easily have seen them going saying that like there are infinite Kangs in all of these various quantum realms in general, you know, if the quantum realm is essentially a universe within the molecules of this one, why couldn't there be infinite of those? But I think they're going more of just like the straight multiverse thing. I'm like, is this going to wind up being Ant-Man? the wasp and uh, uh Cassie and and everybody kind of stuck in a conflict between different kangs uh it's very very interesting and they're definitely clearly setting up Kang in this one as being you know essentially the next Thanos uh just the visuals they're going for are very evocative of Thanos with his throne and uh, aboard the sanctuary and all of that um a really interesting thing too, if you look at the if you look at the posters for the three Ant Man movies, the official posters, the first one is a completely white poster with a little teeny tiny microscopic Ant Man in the very middle, and the second one for Ant Man and the Wasp has two teeny little microscopic you know Ant Man and Wasp ones in there. The third one still has a super microscopic Ant Man and Wasp, but it's a m- super massive Kang just doing one of these and they're standing on his finger. Like it's a really interesting, like, Oh, this just got gigantic. Um, interesting. It seems like the, the premise hopping in my, I mean, we'll have to see how it goes when it comes out in February, but, uh, it seems like they're going to jump into it fairly quickly. And then it's kind of a, you know, escape the quantum realm altogether sort of deal. Like, I guess when they, I, I guess they don't have like an easy way out, without someone coming to get them, right? Because that's the only way that Janet was able to get out was by Hank coming down to the quantum realm and and finding her. Now, this time, it looks like it's the five of them that all go down to the quantum realm, and they don't really have an easy way out. Though there's some weird, like, warping shit going on there. There was a a shot of Ant-Man running as a giant... Ant Man is like being spaghettified around him or something. Like, there's some weird. I'm curious if this movie itself is going to be multiversal, if it's going to take a different approach to it, where at that quantum level, multiversal like branches can just happen in like a moment, but they all exist in the same space. There's some weird stuff that you can do with actual quantum mechanics and stuff that could be really interesting to to have happen there. Um, I don't know how much I love the idea of Janet knowing stuff about what's going on, but never saying it. Cause that definitely seems like the kind of thing that she would, especially when infinity war and Endgame come around, you might be like, okay, what other ridiculous, crazy threats have, have, you know, I've been made aware of. Maybe this is a thing that is worth bringing up to somebody. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think this is, I think this is going to look pretty interesting or, I mean, it does look pretty interesting. I think it's going to be pretty interesting. Um, I generally enjoyed the first two Ant-Man movies. I think the second one was more impressive, but less um, tightly choreographed. It felt a little sloppier in some ways. Um, This one, because it is so much more like abstract in its nature, I feel like has to be a lot more tightly kind of, you know, scripted isn't the right word, but like tightly wound around all of these like visual things they're doing as opposed to the more... um, you know, quick and dirty sort of look to some of the the fights from the second movie. Um, but yeah, this is going to be our first. I think actually that's going to be, yeah, that's going to be the opening of phase five, I want to say, 
for uh, for the MCU. So phase four is ending with Wakanda forever and getting a quick little epilogue with the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. And I believe next year's um, Quantum Mania is going to be the first phase five movie. Um, now, granted, I'm still I'm still a little like meh on how they're doing phases in the multiverse saga, because at least with with the Infinity Saga, each of the phases was very distinct. Phase one was the original, like, you know, origin stories and solo adventures of the heroes that would eventually become the Avengers, concluding with the Avengers. See, uh, uh, I keep wanting to say, like, season two, series two. Phase two uh, is more focused on each of them, you know, exploring the aftermath of that incident. Uh, Tony Stark suffering from PSD after very nearly dying in outer space. Uh, Thor... Uh, you know, dealing with the consequences of Loki, you know, kind of doing his own, like, continuing, cheating death and going on kind of a rampage on Earth, a realm that uh, Odin and, you know, the entire family is meant to uh, protect. And then you've got Captain America, who has to settle into a new life, despite, you know, knowing nobody or and knowing nothing, trying to figure out his place in the world while also having his... Uh, his one real uh, sense of like belonging again kind of shattered out from under him like he he's kind of just a soldier and then he has the organization that he's part of just sort of you know turn out to be a massive betrayal uh, and along with that you get the Guardians of the Galaxy introduced as like okay there's more stuff going on here as well as Ant-Man uh, which which gets into some of the it felt less connected there, but that's also because it came after Avengers Age of Ultron, which felt like Avengers 1 in reverse, where they start out as a really tight-knit team, but they slowly, those cracks start to form. And that way with Phase 3, you begin with Civil War, everything separating, and then everyone at their weakest, and then converging again for Infinity War and Endgame. Here we have Phase 4, which has predominantly been the aftermath of... Uh, the snap and the blip. Um, those have been big. The themes of uh, of trauma and grief have been really um, strong throughout. Uh, and also the setting off of these multiversal stories. Um, very little of the of phase four hasn't dealt with either direct grief over uh, the infinity war, the snap and the blip or uh, the creation or kind of expansion of multiversal, you know, stuff conflict. Um, obviously, Wakanda Forever isn't out yet. Uh, you know, Namor the Submariner is is slated to be, you know, the big villain there. There are rumors of other like big names that may be showing up there. But all in all, I'm intrigued to see. Like, it doesn't feel like we're about to bookend with something. Like, they don't need an Avengers movie every phase or anything. But like. I don't know. I, I'm I'm intrigued to see where that's gonna where where Black Panther two is gonna wind up. Um, Quantum Mania could very easily have been itself a closer for Phase four, but it also works as an opener for Phase five if Kang specifically is going to start becoming a factor. One of the things that I was kind of throwing around as like, oh man, in a, in a perfect world, how could you do this with infinite money and time and resources? And one of the things that I thought would have been kind of neat, and maybe this is a terrible idea, but uh, not every movie and show, but at least several movies and shows all featuring some kind of Kang conflict, especially if there are infinite hymns, like he just starts showing up places and everyone is dealing with Kang in one way or another. Uh, and, and the reason for that being, it kind of mirrors how a lot of the comic books tend to do the large spanning, uh, the large like uh, um, company spanning events, right? Where it's not like, oh, for, I'm probably about to give the worst example ever, but for, for the original Civil War in the comics, it's not like you had Civil War, uh, you know, issue one, issue two, issue three, you had like Captain America and you had, I don't know, it wouldn't have been Invincible Iron Man, it would have been... I don't know. It wouldn't have been superior Iron Man. I don't know. I don't know what the specific like things going on were, but you would read some Captain America. You'd read some some Iron Man. You'd read some Spider Man, uh, Captain Marvel. Oh no, she wasn't. She wasn't involved. She was in uh, Civil War Two. But the point being, you would read various 
individual comic lines to get the whole picture, but they'd all be interwoven into each other. And like, I know that you can only do that so much with the movies, but it'd be a pretty neat experiment to be able to have a larger event that's being witnessed through different lenses over the course of a phase. Um, something that I've always l- like dreamed of as a, as a movie idea i wanted to do this as a um as a short film thing or a collection of short films a while back uh uh, when i was doing 48 hour uh, film projects and things but i really wanted to do something where you had the same sort of set of events you had the same time and place but different movies essentially going on at the same time that just kind of intersect in a couple ways but otherwise like they just kind of keep weaving around each other but they're focused on different things like if for example spider-man 4 which is being rumored as a possibility for a July 2024, I think, release. Um, you know, if it was, say, Spider-Man and Daredevil as as a thing, it'd be neat if the events of Daredevil Born Again and the events of this Spider-Man 4 movie were about the same, like, oh, everyone's fighting Kingpin, but they're going at it from different angles and maybe they, you know, interact or intersect or something and then they kind of split off and do their own thing. And you get, like, little bits and pieces of that. Spider-Man Homecoming had a quick bit of Civil War in it, for example. But I don't know. It'd be cool to see stuff like that kind of overlap with each other a little bit more strongly, I think. It just seems like it'd be a neat thing to explore, you know. Um, But I'm way off track at this point. It was just like a, a, a random train of thought that I wanted to hop on and ride into the station. Uh, The trail looks good. Uh, I... I'm already pretty interested for it. I don't know if it like got me like super pumped. Uh, I'm curious to see if they'll put out a second trailer though. Honestly, I tend to stay away from trailer twos at this point. Marvel's been a little bit more uh, revealy with second trailers lately. If this was a teaser, I would then tune in for another trailer, but this is listed as official trailer. So I think I'm going to uh, just leave it at that and then I'll catch it in February when, uh, when it comes out. I think it said February 17th. So uh, a little under four months from now, I believe. Yeah. So we've got Wakanda Forever uh, in November. We've got Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special in December. And then Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania in February. So cool. Uh, That's all that I've really got for it. I would love to know what you guys think of the trailer. Maybe there's some stuff that I missed. There's a lot going on there. A lot of really wild visuals. It feels essentially like it's going to... it. The vibe-wise, it feels like an Ant-Man Guardians of the Galaxy movie in a sense. Uh, but with way more abstract reality warping stuff going on. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, thank you guys for watching. And uh, we'll see how the movie does when it comes out. Catch you later. Bye.